last part of the mist series, um, the actual simulation of the mist particles. So let's jump over to our scene where we left off. And here, let's create a top network, or a, rather a pop network, since we're going to be simulating particles and already get this pre set up here with the pop object, the pop solver and stuff like that. So first for the source, let's um, use all our incoming points from the uh, out node that we specified here, out, and then I think it's, is it white water? Good question here. <laughs> let's have a look. So all these names, let's just copy this here. Jump inside and paste that there. Um, for the birth, I'll just leave this as is because we're changing the sourcing out outside. So the only thing that I want to change here is the life expectancy so they don't live on forever. Um, I'm going to set this a bit higher than we will actually see them just because we're going to be randomizing this outside and not inside the sim. So we're not going to um, rely on the life variance that we have here, but rather create our own life variance outside after the sim. So I'm just going to set this to six and probably later we're going to be using a normal life expectancy of um, five plus minus one. Um, but we'll see that later. Then for the uh, velocity, let's go a bit lower here just so it doesn't shoot um, with it that much. And also let's just add a bit to the inherited velocity. Maybe let's go for a value of 0.2 for now. Oops, 0.2, there we go. And I think the rest is fine here. So what we wanna add is our advect by volume. So pop advect by volume. And here we wanna to point to our Smoke simulation that we have set up here. So our mist for advection, um, jump inside again, and then add that here. So basically I just uh, copy paste that node and then it gives you the path to that. You can just set this to, rel to be relative. Um, the field name, velocity, that should be fine. The scale, I'll just leave that as one as well. I'm just gonna untick a treat as, uh, as wind, um, just so we don't get any drag in there that we don't, um, because we're going to create our own. So pop, drag, and let's go for a fairly high value here so it does get dragged along quite quickly. Um, the next, let's create a gravity. So just another pop force. So we do have the stuff falling down in general. I mean, it's probably going to happen anyway through the advection, but just to make sure this stuff is out that is outside or doesn't have that much of a strength from the advect by volumes also gets uh, a force downwards. And so let's go for 9.81, which is the standard gravity, um, negative that is, and multiply this by, I'd say probably a quarter, so 2.5, and then that should be fine. So just quickly rename the nodes here. So this is our gravity and this rest is self-explanatory. Just make some room. And just to break up things a bit, let's um, create a, what is it, pop force. Just add a bit of noise here. Let's go for a value of, I don't know, five or six or something. Let's go a bit higher and test that out. Um, swell size, fairly small, so 0.2 or something should be fine. Let's just quickly add an expression here. And we're going to say amplitude by H. And we're just going to turn this around so it, basically the effect is strong in the beginning. And then it starts to fall off or turn off the older the particles get. So add H. And then let's call this our initial breakup should give us some interesting motion, um, some swirling um, once it starts to emit and then afterwards it just starts, to, it just falls like uh, you would expect from a mist. Now to keep this efficient, what we want to do is two things. First, we want to delete particles that go below um, a certain value, Y value. So probably like negative point 
something 0.5 or, or so because stuff that goes further down we absolutely do not need this um so and the other thing that we want to do is delete um mist that is inside the fluid um just to make sure that we don't have uh mist inside the fluid because we don't want to render that as well so um just get that get rid of that right right in the sim so let's uh, create a another proper angle here and then we'll call this kill inside surface and then under the inputs we're going to be sampling our um, water sdf so first input is going to be uh, myself meaning the node itself so basically what everything that comes in and the second is going to be a sop and here we're going to point it to our um, water collider that we set up before so this is going to be out collider and then we should have water water vdb there we go and then for the code fairly straightforward let's just um oops define a float and sample our uh, sdf so sam sample water level or whatever or water surface and then that is equals to our volume sample second input what we want to sample is our collision field and we want to sample it at our current point position so vector at p and now if that sample water level um, is smaller than zero meaning it's inside because if you remember sdf negative inside positive outside um, and so if it's inside so smaller than zero then we want to remove the point so rim oops rim move point zero first input and the current point number it's iterating over perfect hook that up yep cool um and then next let's just create a pop kill uh, what is it pop kill yeah and then let's just enable this i mean you could do this in a wrangle but i'm just gonna do it here just to have some different nodes and i'm not always using a wrangle <laughs> i mean i am doing a vex, a vex expression here but uh it's it's different it's not the same so um if our current position so oops what am i doing here vector at position dot y if that is smaller than a threshold that we're going to provide so first our water level come on <laughs> really having a hard time typing here plus our depth so as we had before depth not sure where we set that up i think but i do remember that we did this um so if our y position is lower than these two values added together so basically zero is our water level and we want to go to a depth of 0.5 or something and every anything that goes below that gets killed nice um let's just for visualizing um our speed let's just drop down a pop color and change this using an expression haha <laughs> um to a ramp and um let's just call this by the length of the velocity so the speed length v at v so vector at velocity from zero to five and then for the color values let's just jump up to where is it um we did set this up 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 here stop the calculation copy parameter down 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 
and here paste relative not not relative reference but paste values all right i think this should be it um let's have a look quickly save our scene as a new version so this is going to be version nine and then let's just hit play and see what happens yeah, super slow, but probably just because it's loading, loading the white water, loading the smoke, um, and that, I think. And I think it's also loading the white water source, so quite a lot of stuff that it is loading. And we can see our mist is shooting up. Beautiful. Um... Yeah, I assume this should all be working. I mean, it's nothing fancy. It's just some particles <laughs> moving that are going to be rendered really, really small just to add a bit of glitter and a bit of texture to the to the smoke sim um, so it doesn't look so soft and flat and just gives um, the impression of a more watery mist type of uh, uh, feel here. And it also helps emphasizing our spiky... Um, explosion types uh, when this shoots out, which is nice. So I think we can probably stop here. That should be fine. Yeah, I do like how this is behaving. So what you can see here is it's starting to spread apart, which is, first of all, due to our variants that we're adding here. Um, so that's why we're getting this spread, this nice, uh, where you can see here, it's forming these kind of uh, triangulating it whatever and then also do our initial breakup which is quite hot, quite strong in the beginning where we're turbulating it in the beginning once it's uh, born up until the age of one and then it stops and so this just adds some nice details there cool um, let's go ahead and cache this so let's drop down a dot import field and then hook this up here and we can do this many many ways um, let's just do it through the top import field and then take this the top node is going to be our pop object where is it pop object there we go and we want to import our geometry let's see there we go and under compression, we want to delete some attributes. First, we want to delete everything except for our age and the ID and our velocity. Everything else we're going to scrap. And we want to do some casting here just to compress some attributes. And that would be the age and the velocity. And the ID, we don't have to. Let's just set this to 16 boat bit float. And that should be good. And now let's see if we have any other attributes to clean here. I have prim group and detail attributes. All right, so drop down another attribute delete. And let's get rid of, I think we'll probably get rid of all of them here. And then also drop down a group delete. Group delete. There we go. And wildcard all. Uh, drop down a rob cacher. Like so. And then this is going to be sim, white water, smoke, mist. Mist. There you go. And that should be good to go. Uh, let's just disable this node here for now and quickly set up our uh, rendering system here. So let's grab our P scale from, where did we set that up? I remember, I think it was somewhere in the, we're in the white water. White water here, there we go. So let's just grab this node here. Stop the calculation. Particle scale. And for this, let's just go a bit smaller. So 0 0.02 as the smallest, and then probably go down, really down 0 0.5 or something. 
uh, distribution should be fine. Let's just add a bit of a different seed. Well, it's probably not going to matter really. Um, and then we want to create a age fade. So basically a ramp in and a ramp out. So once they reach a certain age, they also fade off. So the way we're doing this, um, let's just create our uh, variance. So float variance is equals to fitted. And then well, let's just go on top and add a random value first. So float random value is equals to random i at id <laughs> plus our seed. We've done this so many times now, I feel. Um, and now we can take our random value, fit it between zero, from 0 and 1 to 0, and our variance. And next, let's fit our age and then use our variance to basically offset that. So float age fitted is equals to a fit. Let's grab our age here from zero to our max underscore age. All right. Max age. minus our variance and then from zero to one and so basically our maximum value the maximum age is going to be the the longest a particle can live and then minus the variance that we created here so basically, however high this will be, this is uh, the value that we're, that we're going to subtract from our maximum age. And so basically, if we I don't know, specify maximum age of 5 or 6 in this case, probably, because um, I think that's what we set up inside the sim. And then we just subtract from that um, our random variance, which is random per point. So some will probably have 0 subtracted, and some will have, I don't know, whatever, 1.5 to whatever we set the variance to, um, subtract it, and then we have a new uh, fitted age that we can use later on. Um, one thing that we do want to take care of here is, say, if we would change the um, the max seed, uh, the max age, um, to something lower, that it could conflict with the variance, that it gets into negative areas, and we just want to avoid, because we do not have negative age. Um, so let's just set this to an absolute value, so absolute, and then close that there. Nice. Um, let's just go to the end here, add a couple of new lines. And now what we want to do, create a ramp for our age, so another float, and let's call this age ramped, and that is equals to our channel ramp. And then we'll call this, uh, I don't know, density by age or something. And then in here, feed our age fitted, which is our new age attribute between zero and one with that variance. And next, let's just set our density. So f at density is equals to our age ramped. And just to visualize this, we'll say set our color to our density. All right, a lot of typing. Everything is black. Perfect. <laughs> so let's just quickly um, set this up. So our uh, maximum age is six. Our variance Let's go for 
1.5 and if we set this to zero we should already I uh, probably can't really see it now but I wonder if we get this higher and then now if we add it zoom in a bit and maybe we can so if we add a variance here so it should have a wider spread yeah and that's what we get cool just add a bit of seed here doesn't really matter but you can see some of the i mean probably would be better to go to a later frame because obviously you're not going to have anything until the age of six minus 1.5 that's where it's going to start to happen um that's probably why we didn't see that much of a difference here um but so yeah this is taking a bit so let's just cancel here jump to the last frame that we had that was working um and continue here so uh, and the, what we want in the end so basically once it reaches that maximum age we want it to have zero density when it starts so when it's born we also want it to have zero density um, so let's just quickly change this to a spline again here and then in the beginning um, we would really want to ramp this up really really high and then have another one fairly close to this one so we get a really sharp ramp there and then a soft drop off towards the end something like that should be fine so now we can see in the beginning it's fairly bright high density and then towards the end that would start to fade off so if we change the maximum age here to let's go for 1.5 for example i think and maybe turn down the variance wonder maybe we have to go for one or something go for 0.5 and there we can see it starts to die off probably because it didn't live that long so that's what, what's going to happen in the end just much nicer and it's all spread out and we'll see that once we cache this so back to our settings so that was uh, 6 1.5 i believe some random value and then our ramp of the density so I'll quickly call this our um, age fade and then let's cache this uh, not cache it <laughs> create a null here to reference it i mean we could go ahead and cache it but i um, think we'll we'll just see how this turns out if um if we have to actually because we're going to be tweaking these values probably once we get to rendering just add a bit of different scale to match um, and uh, so I'm not sure it makes sense to cache this right away and it's also probably pretty pretty light I guess so how many points do we have yeah 1.6 million it's not that much so render whitewater mist what do we actually call our smoke whitewater smoke yeah cool sounds legit and i think that's it one thing that we do want to do is go to our simnet and add our additional sims so first of all that would be our whitewater smoke is that what we called it probably not oh no, we did cool make sure our task um frames per task is set high enough if you're using deadline otherwise it doesn't really matter and then here this is going to be our sim white water did we call it mist i bet you we didn't oh yes we did not nice so oops what did we call it mystery smoke mist cool what a good name um so here we name that let's check it here perfect all hooked up nice so now let's um connect this all together let's just drop down another deadline node here or we could probably 
just do this with a merge so you can follow along as well if you're not using deadline so let's just merge all this in so the sim is going to run it's going to create our collider then it's going to create our flip sim our main flip sim next it's going to create our i think we're missing something here let me check because i think in the top we do have another oh yeah here we go sim color fade have to add that one as well so let's just quickly count them so we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then eleven let's just check how many we have here so we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten Oh yeah, and the missing color fade as well. So let's just duplicate this one here. And then let's just call this color fade. Add to our tasks here, since this is a simulation. And I think this is needed for the whitewater source, I guess. So we can hook that up there. Like this. And now all the other stuff basically this has to run in sequence so basically the white water source has to come after the flip sim then after the sourcing the white water main can happen then the smoke sim then the mist sim um, and then all this other stuff can run in parallel if you do have more machines so we can grab these and these and hook them up to the merge as well so let's just cycle this through holding shift R let's quickly cut these again ah that doesn't make any sense let's just do it this way grab them these and this and then just connect them nice didn't really order them oh who cares so and this is just our final submitter for the entire uh, entire sim tree so here we have our caching of our uh, flip mesh and then here we have our render preparation of the white water and the bubbles all right, this I think concludes it for the for the mist section, and now everything should be set up here so that we can take this and apply it to our other other pillars. Since this is just one of of, uh, of four, um, and so I guess we're going to be doing that next. And of course, turn this on and cache this.